So we're going to expand the my list functionality. The first thing that I want to that I want you to do is create a generic trait called my predicate of t and it will have a small method to test whether a value of type t passes a condition. So every subclass of my predicate of t will actually have a different implementation of that little method which tests whether uh, the t passes that condition. All right. Second exercise, a generic trait called my transformer. It will take two parameters a and b, and it will have a small method to convert a value of type a into a value of type b. Every subclass of my transformer will have a different implementation of that method. Now. I want you to implement the following functions on my list. I want you to implement a function called map, which takes a my transformer and it returns a new my list of a different type. Filter, which takes a my predicate and it returns a my list and flat map, which takes a transformer from A to my list of B, and it returns a my list of B. So here's how these things will work. So my predicate of T will have a little method say test. Which receives a a uh, value of type t and returns a boolean. And let's say, for example, we have a concrete uh, class which extends the my predicate t uh, trait. So, for example, if I have the class uh, even predicate, which extends my predicate of int, that little test method in even predicate will take an int as a parameter and it will return whether that int is. Uh, even or not. All right. In the same way, the my transformer, let's say it returns um, a string to an int. Let's say string to int transformer. That will extend my transformer from string to int. And the method inside, let's um, say that the method is called transform which receives um, a parameter of type A and will return a value of type B. Then for the case of the string to int transformer the implementation of the method transform will just turn that string which is received as a parameter to an int so if you've implemented my predicate and my transformer correctly, then map, filter, and flat map should work as follows. Let's say you have a list, uh, say one, two, three. All right, and if you map one, two, three with a transformer, which, uh, for example, doubles an int, then you will get the list two, four, six. Of course, this is uh, pseudocode, if you will. You need to pass in the correct uh, arguments here, all right? Also, the filter. If you have the list one, two, three, four, which filters that a number is even, should give you the list two, four. And flat map is a little bit special. So if you have the list one, two, three, four, or let's say one, two, three, flat map and for each n you will get the list uh, n and n plus 1 all right this will return the concatenation of all of these little sublists for every element so for example the a sublist for 1 is going to be 1 2 the sublist for the number 2 with this little argument is going to be 2 3 then the sublist for the element 3 is going to be 3, 4. 
So this is the result that I want you to get after flat map. Now a hint so that you don't get into frustrations while solving this exercise. This is very important. I want you to define your my predicate trait with a minus sign for T and my transformer with a minus sign for A. So basically I want you to define my predicate contravariant in the type T and my transformer contravariant in the type A. This is very important. Without it, your code will not compile. Now, I won't go into detail why this happens. This is a deep rabbit hole, and we're going to deal with it in the advanced course, but please accept this very, very tiny little hack right here. If you're curious, I can answer this in the course form, but for now, just accept this as is, and we'll use my predicate and my transformer with these signatures. Now, if this exercise seems a little bit too abstract, don't stress too much, and try to give it a good thought, and even rewind the video if uh, there are parts of it that you don't understand. But give it a good thought, and I'm going to uh, give a solution in a couple of seconds. But for now, just pause the video. All right, so I'm here in the my list uh, file, and let's define our two traits here. So like I said, trait my predicate with the type parameter t with the little minus sign, and we're going to have a little method called, let's say, test, which receives an element of type T and returns a Boolean. All right, so this is the entire definition of the my predicate trait. All right, and the trait my transformer receives two type parameters, A, which is contravariant, and B, and it will have, again, a very small method. Let's call this transform which receives an element of type A and returns an element of type B. Now, given my predicate and my transformer, the function signatures for map, flat map, and filter in my list will look like these. So, def map, which receives a type parameter B, because we'll turn a my list of A into a my list of B, so we need to be aware of the new type parameter B, and we'll receive a transformer. So it the transformer is a my transformer from A to B. And it will return a my list of B. So this is the function signature for map. Notice that if I don't put in the minus sign here, your code, that is the function signature for map, will not compile because of this cryptic covariant type A occurs in invariant position. Right, so I want you to go ahead and put this minus back here. All right, then flat map, which again receives a type parameter B because the return type is again a my list of B, so we need to be made aware of the new type parameter here. And the transformer is a my transformer from A to a my list of B and the return type is in my list of B. And filter is the easiest of all, which receives no type parameters and only receives a predicate, which is a predi my predicate of A. And the, re the end result is going to be a my list of A. Okay, so this is the first step, deciding on the function signatures for map, flat map, and filter. Now let's go ahead and implement them. So let's start with the empty singleton object. I'm just gonna copy the, fun the function definitions and just replace them here and uh, replace A with nothing. And uh, I'm just gonna copy this around. And wherever I see A, I'm going to replace nothing. All right. Now, the implementations here are going to be extremely straightforward because mapping, flat mapping, and filtering an empty list are all going to return an empty list. So the implementation for all these methods is going to be empty. All right. Now, for cons, this is going to get a little bit um, complicated. I'm going to start with filter. which receives a predicate, which is a my predicate of A and returns a my list of A. 
Now, what does this do? I have a cons with a head and a tail, right? Now, filtering with a predicate means filtering the head and then filtering the tail. This is a singly linked list. So basically, what I first need to do is to test if head satisfies the predicate. That is, if the predicate dot test with head passes. So, if predicate dot test with head, right, then head will be included in the result. So I'm going to say new cons with head and the tail filtered with the predicate. So the tail needs to be filtered and then needs to be passed in here as the result. So uh, t dot filter predicate. Otherwise, predicate dot test with the head does not pass. So that means the head will not be included in the result. So I'm just going to return t dot filter predicate. Does that make sense? So if head passes the predicate, it will be included in the result. So the result is certainly going to be a cons with the head. The tail is going to be filtered with a predicate, so we don't really know what that will return. It might return an empty list, but we'll just delegate to the recursive call with filter and uh, it will take care of itself. Otherwise, the head does not pass the predicate, so it will not be included in the result. So the result will be tail filter predicate. All right. Now, let's move on to map. I'm going to copy the function signatures here. So I'm going to copy the map signature from my list. And in this case, we are not concerned with the structure of the result because the structure will be identical to this list in the sense that if uh, this list has three elements, then the result will also have three elements. So the implementation is going to be a new cons because if this is a non-empty list, then so is the result. So we'll uh, create a new cons and the head is going to be transformed by the transformer. So the head of the result is going to be transformer.transform of head. So this is going to be the head of the result. And the tail of the result is going to be t.map with the same transformer. So just a recursive call. Let's just comment out flat map for a second. So I'm commenting out flat map just to make sure that our code runs well so far. So if I print line list of integers dot map with a new my transformer from int to int where the override def transform for an int returns an int and say lm times 2 all right. So this is basically the example that I gave you at the uh, beginning of the exercise. And this, by the way, is an anonymous class. This was the whole purpose of the exercise. If I print line this guy dot to string, then I should receive the value uh, two four six. So if I right click and run, I get the values two four six. Now, I think this might be overwhelming to some of you, so I'm going to break it down. So how does map actually work? Let's break this down. Let's say I have the list uh, 1, 2, 3, right? So 1, 2, 3 dot map, and uh, for shorthand, I'm going to uh, pass in um, the pseudo syntax n multiplied by 2 in, uh, in which the actual syntax is a new transformer with the uh, override def transform here on the spot, right? Okay, so this is what it is. So it has a new cons with the transformer.transform with a head, and the head is one. Transformer.transform of one is one times two, which means the value of two. And the tail is going to be the tail 
to 3 dot map with the same transformer, right? And this is later going to be a new cons with the same head. And this expression here is, again, a new cons with transform dot transform this guy's head and n multiplied by 2 with the head being 2 is going to be the value 4. And the list with the only n1, 3 map with the same transformer, which in turn is going to be a new cons, 2, new cons, 4. And this guy is going to be a new cons with transform dot transform this list's head which is 3 times 2, which is 6. And then this list's tail, which is empty, dot map with the same transformer, which in turn is a new cons with 2, new cons 4, new cons 6. And empty dot map with a transformer, if you saw the previous implementation, is still empty. So empty. So this is your complete result. Let's try the filter as well. So if I print line uh, list of integers dot filter, and let's pass an anonymous instance of my predicate, my predicate of int, with the on the spot implementation override def test, which receives an element of type int and returns a boolean. And the implementation is going to be lm mod 2 is equal to 0 dot to string at the end. Then because I have the list 1, 2, 3, I'm only going to print the list consisting of the element 2, which is exactly what we see in the console. So let's break it down. How does this work? So if we have filter um, the list 1, 2, 3, dot filter and uh, just for the sake of space I'm going to say n mod 2 equals 0 then that is going to be well predicate dot test head this predicate dot test 1 will fail so I will return the tail dot filter predicate so this is going to return 2 3 dot filter with the same n mod 2 equals 0 in turn predicate.test with the head this time passes, so this is going to be a new cons with 2, and t.filter predicate, so the list consisting of 3, filter, and mod 2 equals 0. So this is going to be a new cons of 2, and the list 3filter is going to test the predicate for the head, and this is going to fail this time, so it will return tail.filter predicate. By tail, I mean this guy's tail, which is empty, dot filter, and mod 2 equals 0. Now, empty.filter anything basically returns empty because that's how we implemented this. So this is going to return a new cons with 2 and empty. So this is our complete result, and it will print just the value 2 here to the console. Now for flat map, this is going to be very interesting because we need a concatenation function. So let's add a little concatenation function. Let's first of all uncomment the flat map definition, and we're going to implement it in cons very shortly. But first, let's add a concatenation method. I'm going to call this plus plus. So I'm concatenating a list with uh, my list of A and I'm returning my list of A, but of course I'm gain, getting this annoying contravariant um, error here. So like we uh, did with the add method, we're going to expand this by supplying a new parameter B. So B, super type of A, list is on my list of B, and the return type is my list of B. All right, so this is concatenation. All right, let's uh, implement concatenation in empty and cons. So def++ 
with the type parameter b super type of nothing and uh, the list is a my list of b and the return type is a my list of b this is very simple because it just returns that list empty concatenating with anything will return that thing this is very simple for cons it's a little bit more complicated so let's copy the implement the function definition from the trait or the abstract class sorry and uh, let's implement it here the implementation is going to be very simple it's going to return new cons with the same head and tail plus list this is a little bit of magic. So if I concatenate list one, two with list three, four, five, then this will see a new cons with one and the list two plus plus three, four, five per the function implementation, which in turn is a new cons with one. And this because it's a cons will also return a cons with two and the tail, which is empty this time, plus plus three, four, five. I think I put in the correct number of parentheses. And finally, this will return you cons with one, new cons two, and empty plus plus three, four, five will just return three, four, five, which actually is a new cons with three, new cons four, new cons five. All right, so this is our complete result. So this is a very short but very useful uh, functional implementation. So let's move on to flat map. So let's go ahead and copy the function definition from the abstract class and paste it here under the concatenation. And this is going to be, again, a very powerful one-liner. So this is going to be transformer.transform the head concatenated with tail flat map transformer one liner super powerful this is the power of Scala and you're getting a taste of it uh, right now so let's break it down so if I have the uh, list one two which uh, gets a flat map for every n we get uh, the list n and n plus one well this is transformer dot transform the head transformer.transform1 is the list 1, 2, concatenated with tail flat map. The same transformer, which again is 1, 2, concatenated with transformer.transform this guy, of course, 2, 3 concatenated with this guy is empty okay so because this is a single uh, list the tail is going to be empty empty flat map the same transformer right which basically means one two concatenated with two three concatenated with empty which of course is one two two, three, if we assume that the concatenation method works correctly. So let's test our methods here. So if I find another list of integers, let's say I copy this guy and um, let's say another uh, list of integers and say cons um, four and five. All right. Then if I print line um, list of integers concatenated with another list of integers to string then this should print one two three four five just to prove that our concatenation method works correctly now let's finally print the flat map so if I do a list of integers flat map a new transformer from int to a my list of int in which the override def transform takes an element of type int and returns a my list of int, which is in this case a new cons 
with element and another cons with element plus one and empty. This is what basically means the element and element plus one. So if I flat map with this transformer and if I print to string at the end, I should be seeing one, two, two, three, and three, four. And the console. Right, so I see one, two, which is the sublist for one, two, three, which is the sublist for two, and three, four, which is the sublist for three. All right, so quite a lot and quite powerful with frankly just a few lines of code. So in just a hundred lines of code, you've defined basically a complete uh, covariant generic list, which is pretty darn cool. All right, Daniel here. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did and found this useful. And I can't wait to see you in the next video where we're gonna talk some more new stuff.